What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn about test driven development what it is and how to do it in python so let us get right into it all right so the basic idea of test driven development is that we first write our tests and then we write our actual code so in a sense we write our code to pass all the tests that we have already written we don't write tests for already existing code. So it's the other way around. And we're going to get right into this with an example, I'm going to open up a new Python file calculator.py. And this is going to be our actual code, so to say, we're going to implement a simple calculator class. But we're not going to write the code yet, we're just going to define the methods. So we're going to say class calculator. And we're going to define the methods at which takes x and y as parameters. And we're going to just add pass here to fill the space, it doesn't have any functionality yet. And we're going to do the same thing with subtract x and y pass and then def multiply x and y pass and then we're going to say divide x and y pass. So this is our class now and we don't have any implementation yet. We know, okay, there are four methods and we have parameters and the structure and all that. And maybe we can add type hints. Maybe we can say, okay, this should be uh, only an integer or something. You can make the type definitions here. But all in all, this is not implemented. The idea of test driven development now is to go ahead and define the tests first before writing any code. So we want to define what should this program do? How should it behave in different situations? then you put that into code using uh, unit tests, and then you write your class, you implement your class so that it passes all the tests. And what we can do for this now is we can create a new Python file, test underscore uh, calculator dot py. And here we're going to import unit test. And we're also going to import from calculator the calculator class. So our code that we will write at some point. Um, and here now we create a class test calculator, which extends from unit test dot test case. So this is just ordinary testing. And what we're going to do here now is we're going to have a setup method, which is going to be in this case, very simple. So here you just define what happens before any of the tests uh, are being run. And in this case, we're just going to say self calculator is going to be initialized as a calculator instance. And now we can define test cases. So we can think about uh, the different cases or the different ways in which we could use this calculator. And the important thing is you want to use, uh, you want to think about positive cases and about negative cases. So you don't want to just test for the functionality of adding two numbers properly, you also want to test, okay, what happens when I enter a list? What happens when I enter a string? What happens when I uh, you know, enter none values or something like that, you'd want to define the different cases and what should happen in those cases. So a very simple case would be and usually you want to specify the names, or you want to choose names for the individual functions here for the individual tests that describe what the test is doing and what you expect. So for example, test underscore add numbers returns sum, for example, that is a test name. And what we would do here is we would say result equals and then we would say self calculator at and you can choose some numbers here. Usually what you want to do is you want to do edge cases. In the case of at we don't really have edge cases in the case of division an edge case or a special case would be division by zero, for example, or maybe when you have some limits that you want to check, you want to see, okay, what happens at the limit, you want to use the values very close to the limit and not just arbitrary values. But what we can do here now is we can say, okay, 20, and 60, for example, let's choose two very simple integers, what I want to make sure is that the calculator actually uh, computes the proper sum. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say self dot assert equal. And I want to assert that 20 plus 60. So the actual sum is the same as the result of this class. Um, yeah, so we get this then what we can do is also we can do the same thing for floating point numbers. So we can say, what if it's 20.56 plus 60.89, 
then I also want to get the correct result, obviously. So this is a very basic test. This is like the default use case of the add function. Now we might think a little bit further, okay, what should happen if I enter different types of things? And one thing that is clear is if I enter just something, if I enter just some basic strings, or if I enter some, uh, you know, non values or something, that this should fail. So it should it should raise a type error. This is how I want to define the functionality or the behavior of this function. So test at non numbers raises type error, for example. And then we can say, okay, self assert raises. So I want to assert that an exception is being raised. And what should happen is I want to call the function. So the first thing uh, that I pass here actually is the exception, I want to have a type error. And how do I want to produce this type error? So what should I check? Uh, if it produces this type error? First of all, I pass a callable and the callable in this case is self calculator at important, do not call the function, you want to pass the callable, you want to pass the function as an entity. And then you want to pass the arguments separately. So for example, the arguments could be Hello, world, if the arguments are Hello, world, I'm expecting a type error, then I can copy this and I can change this a little bit. So I also expect a type error if one of the two values here is an integer, and the other one is a string. So if one of them is something that I cannot work with, then I also want to raise an error. So like this as well. Um, also, I want to get an error if I have a string that contains numbers, but is not really a number. So for example, if I have uh, 20, and I add 20 to 60.10.20.3, which could be an IP address, this should not be treated as a number, this should not be typecasted, which lead me uh, leads me to the next thing, I want to be able to typecast strings if they contain actual numbers. So I can say here, third test case, test at string numbers returns sum. And then what I can do is I can say, okay, the result of self calculator at uh, what I want to do here is I want to add the two strings 50 and 60.7. Now the important thing is, by default, what a string adding operation would do is it would just concatenate these two strings. So the result would be a string that looks like this 50 60.7 we want to have the actual calculation since both of these things are actually numbers, they just have to be typecasted properly. So we want to assert the equality between 50 plus 60.7. This should be the same as the result of the calculation. And uh, we also want to be able to do this if just one of them is a string and the other one already is a number. So they should have the same result and um, the other way around, they should also have the same result. There you go. Um, and now we have this definition of how our add function should work. Let's say this is now everything that we are interested in, of course, in a real project, you will have a more complex function, you will probably write many, many more tests, because you want to have all the different cases. The important thing about test driven development is that your tests should be very reliable, you should know that when all your tests pass, your program works properly, your tests are sort of the definition of functionality. So the tests define does the program work or not. And the goal is to find good tests. So the goal is to find very uh, tests that are very hard to pass, and that define the functionality of the program. So, so they should take care of all the bugs, all the edge cases, they should define all the functionality, you should know that when you run the tests, and you get only green checks, that your program works the way you defined it to work. So if I run this right now here, you're going to see that I have three tests, and all of them fail. So probably I'm going to see this. Where are we going to see this? Usually it says failed three or something. There you go. Failed failures. None of these work. Now I can go ahead now and start with the implementation because now I can say, okay, my tests are done, I can go into my code and actually write code that passes all these tests. And I can start with a very primitive solution, I can just return x plus y and see what happens. So this would be a very basic implementation, I run the tests. And now you can see, okay, one of the tests here passes, the other two are still failing. 
The reason for that is obviously because, and you can see now failures equals two, because uh, the basic functionality here, the first test succeeds. I just have numbers, I add them, this is what I expect, so this works. But you can also see that the other two do, do not work. So I can run this again, and we can see exactly what the problem is here. Type error not raised. Okay, and here we have that 110.7 is not equal to the string concatenation, obviously. So what we can do now is we can adjust the function to pass the tests, we can say something like, if not is instance, so if x is not an instance, instance of an integer, and not an instance of float is instance x float. If it's neither an integer, nor a float, I can raise a type error. And then I can do the same thing for y. So I just say that both of them should produce a type error if they're not numbers. And then I can test this again. So I can run the tests again. And now you can see two tests pass, but the third one does not because the problem is that I'm just raising a type error now, even though I should type cast these numbers. So now I have to add some functionality that takes care of the third test. Um, and what could I do here, I could do something like, okay, if the instance is not uh, integer and not float, what I want to do is I want to uh, check if this is a number. And how could I do that? I could say if x, um, x being a string, obviously, since it's not an integer or a float. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's, it's actually not obvious, because it could also be something else. But I didn't test for that. So you can see if the test is not there, if I don't have a test testing, if this is, for example, a NumPy array, um, I don't have this case handled. And because of that, my test would pass, but I would still have some problems here. But let's now naively assume that this is a string, because that is all I'm testing for, I just want to pass all the tests. Uh, if this is a string, there is the function or the method is numeric. So I can just say is numeric. And this would check if the if the string is numeric. The problem with that is that it does not take into account uh, decimal points. So if I have something like 10.8 as a string, it will not classify this as numeric because it has a point in there. So what we can do is we can first call the function replace to replace the point by an empty string, but only once. And this is why we have this test case here with the IP address sort of structure, because if we replace all the points, this would also succeed. And this is not what we want. We only want to remove a single point, a single decimal point. And then we want to see if the result after doing that is numeric. If yes, what we want to do is we want to, uh, or actually, let's, let's test for the negative. If it is not numeric, we want to raise a type error. Otherwise, we want to just typecast. So x is going to be float of x. And we can do the same thing here for y. y equals float y. And this would now do the typecasting. So I can run this again. And you can see all my tests pass. Now, the idea again of test driven development is that if your tests are of high quality, if you covered all the cases, if you thought about every edge case, every scenario, everything that could happen, and you define it as a test, when you see only green checks, you're good to go. In this case, that is not the case. So here I have the problem that I could pass all sorts of values that are not strings, not numbers, I could also, uh, for example, a very simple thing that I could do is I could uh, pass a negative number. So I can pass negative 50 as a string, for example, and this would already not work because I'm not handling this, this is not going to be recognized as numeric by the method. But it's also not handled by me manually. So what I could do here, and this is also part of the back and forth, of course, you have test driven development. But as you go and implement your code, you're going to see, okay, this is a case, I encountered a case that I did not define in a test, this is a problem. So I'm going to write an additional test, test at and then I could say, um, let's call this string negative numbers returns sum. And then I could define, I could copy all of this here. And I could just add a negative to to this, for example, here. Uh, so I just need to be careful here. This would be like that. And this would be like that. And 
of course, now this is not going to be passed. So then the next step would again be to handle this in the add function here, which I'm not going to do now for this video. But that is the idea of test driven development, you define a lot of tests, you make sure they cover all you want to cover, and then you write the code, so that it passes all the tests. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.